I've been let out the Photo Gear News garage and I am in Venice and it's really hot and sunny and sweaty but I've just got my hands on the new Sony RX100 Mark VI. Can you believe we're on Mark VI already? The first one was released in 2012 and with every new camera we've had a load of new features and this one brings one big new feature that isn't actually so big. So that new feature is of course this, it's the 24 to 200 millimeter lens. So the aperture starts at 2.8 and it goes to f4 by the time you're at that 200 millimeters. Basically this seems to be taking on Panasonic's kind of TZ100-200 range of cameras. So far it seems really nice, the lens is very small and compact, so that's it, it's telly and then that is at the widest point. Now I've got the RX100 Mark IV and to me this feels exactly the same kind of size. There's not a lot of difference in size and shape and weight. It does use the same battery and you do tend to get through those. That's something perhaps they could have improved upon but haven't. But the other key new feature, we have a touch screen. So an articulated touch screen just like before. It flips up for all you selfie lovers and then of course previously it went to about there. Now you can fold it down through to 90 degrees for shooting sort of down. Another neat new feature, the pop-up finder. So previously this would pop up and then you'd have to pull out the EVF, not anymore. It all pops out in one unit there, up and out there. So that just pushes back in and all down in one go. Let's just do that again. Just been photographing some dancers and it's so bright and sunny out here. It is difficult to see the screen, but the EVF, it might be quite small and a little bit fiddly to look through. But when it's bright and sunny like this, it's a real lifesaver to still actually be able to see what you're doing. So other than that, design-wise, it's pretty much the same. Everything's in almost identical positions from what I can see, the button layout's the same, little pop-up flash just on top there, very dinky, you're not gonna use that for much to be honest. So not a lot's changed in terms of sort of layout and stuff like that, they've just done that kind of thing that they've done with previous models of adding just a couple of new key features, but the lens is a pretty sort of major overhaul of the camera in terms of how people are gonna be using it. So a lot of the tech in here is actually borrowed from the RX10 Mark IV and sort of to a lesser extent, actually the Sony A9. We've got the Exmor R processing system. So processing wise, it's the one inch stack sensor. So a lot of the, the RAM and memory is actually built into the sensor itself. That allows for really fast readout times. Plus the Exmor R processing system, we've got an AF speed of just 0.04 three seconds, which Sony claim is the fastest AF in the world, and it matches the focusing system of the RX10. Now again, thanks to the processing and the sense of readout speed, we can shoot at up to 24 frames per second, and there's a buffer of 233 images when you're shooting on JPEG. Now that's a hell of a lot of information that this camera can churn out. It really is a super fast processing system that Sony have put into this. And of course the processing also deals with the AEF system. So we've got 315 phase detection AF points that cover 65% of the frame. Basically, unless you're at the very edges of the image, then you're gonna be covered by one of those phase detection points. So one of the questions that I've already been asked on Twitter is does the Sony RX100 Mark VI have an external microphone socket? And the answer is no, sadly it doesn't. So I'm filming this right now on the Sony RX100 Mark VI and you're hearing the internal audio. Now, as you can see, I am in the middle of Venice. There's lots of hustle and bustle around. So this will give you an idea of what it's like if you plan to use the internal microphone. Now I'm shooting in 4K, I'm on just the standard color profile, I've not got any picture profiles on or anything like that. And let's just have a little look how it does. So video wise, we've got exactly the same options that we had on the RX100 Mark IV and the Mark V. You've got 4K at 25 frames a second, but you've only got that five minute recall time. Should be enough for most people to use, to be perfectly honest. You're not gonna be using this camera for doing big long productions with things. 
then of course you've got full HD as well at up to 60 frames per second if my memory serves me correctly and then you've got those slow-mo speeds you can shoot at 250 500 or a thousand frames per second but there are restrictions with the the frame size with that the slow-mo looks really cool takes a little bit of a while to learn how to operate it and to use it but when it works you can get some really stunning footage and if you're just shooting for kind of YouTube the image quality is perfectly fine again because of the drop in resolution you're not going to be using it for sort of anything really serious production wise but if you're doing that anyway you're not going to be using an RX100 camera so vlogging with the RX100 Mark 6 it's pretty good I'm liking it as an experience I obviously can't tell what the audio is like so that is going to be the deciding factor when you listen back and hear this footage but the AF is good the lens 24 mil that's certainly wide enough image stabilization seems pretty good and obviously the key thing is I can see myself up here so as predicted the battery life isn't that great on the RX100 Mark 6 we've got the same battery we've seen before if you're going to use it for any length of time you're going to need to pack at least a couple of spares especially if you're shooting video let's cut back to me doing something else because the battery for doing this vlogging little bit of it is about to die so managed to recharge the camera overnight because we have got micro USB charging on it just like we have on the previous RX100 cameras. So no problem sort of charging while you're out and about if only I'd have brought my battery charger last night. Did take some nice low light shots and the camera seems to perform quite well. And it's also nice that you've got facilities like the ability to do sort of 30 second long exposures and bulb modes all in a tiny sort of travel camera. Combined with that lens, this. I'm enjoying this, it's a nice travel companion to have with me. When it comes to shooting video though, um, I've noticed a few things this morning. If you're shooting in S-Log3 or S-Log2, your base ISO is ISO 1000, which is quite high, especially when there is no ND filter on here, and also the minimum aperture is F11. So you have to be very careful with the exposures. So shooting at 50th of a second for 4K footage, is not really going to happen so what i've done is i've switched to shooting full hd and i was shooting at 200th of a second shutter speed and 100 frames a second so hopefully the exposure is probably just about right might be a little bit overexposed now i'm not an expert when it comes to applying LUTs and grading video but this is what i've managed to get out of the s-log 3 from the rx100 mark 6. I think the whole point of having the kind of S-Log mode really is so that you can match it with stuff like this with the A7 cameras and have this as a, you know, as a B cam. And for that kind of purpose, it's great. Like I say, you're just gonna wanna get an ND filter for the end of the lens to really match cameras up nicely in terms of exposure. So one of the things I've learned about the camera is the aperture range on the, on the zoom lens. So obviously it says it's, f2.8 when it's at its 24 millimeter equivalent setting and it is but the second i start to to zoom in a tiny little bit it jumps up to sort of f3.2 so you're looking at f2.8 when you are shooting at 24 millimeters 25 millimeters you're at f sort of 3.2 then you jump up to 3.5 and it kicks into f4 at about 40 millimeters now what's very cool about it though is it, it stays at f4 right up until you get to around the sort of 100 millimeter about 100 and 105 millimeter mark ish so f4 just over 100 millimeter that's pretty good it's going to enable you to have a reasonably shallow depth of field with some of those portraits just remember it's a one inch sensor so actually it's not obviously like an actual 100 millimeter lens at f4 the lens on it is actually a nine millimeter to 72 millimeter so when you zoom in to the 200 millimeter equivalent you're actually at 72 millimeters at f4.5 so you're going to get the same depth of field as you would if you had 
a 70 millimeter full frame lens at f4.5 so nice for sort of blowing out backgrounds a little bit but you're not going to get sort of super shallow depth of field like you would with sort of 200 millimeters f4.5 but on the whole i found the zoom lens behaves really well the zoom back and forth is nice and quick it zooms at a nice kind of steady pace when you're shooting video and it's great like i say that the aperture is still f4 when you're around that 100 millimeter mark now with a touch screen, we've had the improvements here. It folds in all sorts of new ways, which is a nice touch. Touch screen wise, you've got touch screen for AF when you're, you know, touch screen AF like you'd expect, but you still haven't got it for menu items. So there's still been a couple of times where I found myself touching the screen and it's not actually changing items within the, the menu system. Those big orange kind of okay and cancel buttons that you occasionally accidentally press on the old RX100 cameras, you're still gonna be pressing those on this and they're not gonna be doing anything at all. And of course we've got NFC, we've got Wi-Fi, we've got all the usual stuff that we've come to expect from Sony cameras. And just looking at the JPEGs, the, the image quality from the lens seems pretty good. There doesn't seem to be too much of a drop off as you reach that 200 millimeter point. Although caveat again, we've not looked at the raw images from this just the jpegs and like i said a lot of the algorithms are inherited from the a7 series and from the a9 in many ways it is actually like a sort of baby a7 III. a lot of the same kind of features on here so that's it that's my first look sort of hands-on preview of the sony rx100 mark 6. if you've enjoyed this video then i'll be back in the uk in the garage studio doing a full review of this in the next few weeks so if you want to watch that video make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest photo gear news and reviews